minus five, four, three, two, one, ignition. And there's a new space race happening in the world right now. It involves the US government, adversaries of the West, and even people like Elon Musk. This race involves a dramatic boom in the amount of satellites in the sky, but it also involves different countries spying on each other in space. So how does a small Australian startup get involved in all of this? Well, there's a company called Hero, and they're playing a critical role of helping Western allies in this race. Well, today we get to talk to the founders of this space company, Hero, which makes the cameras and sensors which go on satellites up there. This helps governments and companies alike monitor what the hell is going on in space. So if you're interested in the global competition that's happening in space right now, you need to watch this. I know what you're thinking when I say space race. John F. Kennedy, the Apollo mission, landing on the moon. All these things happened in the 1960s, so why are we talking about it right now? There's a new race, and it involves actors launching satellites up into space for all kinds of different reasons. Now, I'm going to give you a bit of context. When I'm talking about satellites, I'm talking about satellites that go into Earth orbit. This is when a satellite is put into space and it's put on a path around the Earth. The amount of objects launched into space was really stationary between 1965 and 2010. Then all of a sudden, this number started to rise dramatically. And by 2023, the number of objects launched into space every year was over 2,600. So why on earth did all of this happen? Well, instead of just sitting here and theorizing about it, we decided to talk to Will and HJ of HEO to find out more. So there's a couple of stories about what's happening in space today. So it's several years ago where we went from about 3,000 satellites three years ago um, to this future where we think there's going to be 100,000 satellites in the next seven years. So over a 10-year period, we're going from 3,000 to 100,000 active satellites in space. So uh, one thing is like launch getting uh, cheaper, which makes space more accessible. So first, uh, you have a lot of commercial companies led by SpaceX and other launch companies, which is also like the technology getting transferred in other countries like China as well. Uh, academia entering with the research type projects in space. What all that means is now you have a lot of satellites in space, which kind of opens up the uh, in-orbit servicing. In a new space race, there is evidence of that in what countries are doing in their commercial sectors, in national policy settings, in investment, both government and private. And that is an absolute reflection, uh, and this is, I think, quite sad, actually, but it's an absolute reflection of what's happening on Earth. So terrestrial politics transforming the space environment, which used to be deeply collaborative. You think about things like the International Space Station that brought former adversaries together, the US and Russia working together, whole lot of nations contributing to a joint project that benefited humankind. That kind of idea, unfortunately, is being displaced by the same dynamics of competition and wanting the main dominance that is happening here on Earth. And that is a, a product of you know, rising powers, changing power dynamics, um, different relationships and blocks emerging. You are seeing the same kind of thing happen in space. So that's the end of the story, right? Well, not quite. All these satellites going into space causes a bunch of problems. These range from debris to maintenance to even governments trying to spy on each other in space. So this means that being able to see what actually goes on up there becomes really important. But the problem is, is that imaging things in space is really, really hard. And this is where HEO comes into play. They realize that they could make a whole business out of imaging things in space. Well, it's nice and early here on Wednesday morning, and we're just about to drive to Hio's office in Botany, which is a bit of a different place for a startup office. Yeah, I can't say we've ever been to Botany before for anything work-related, but I'm excited to check it out, and yeah. this is going to be a fun adventure.
Um, something I'm really excited for today is to just meet some real space nerds. Uh, we were talking to obviously James Cameron from Airtree and he said that he was just so excited by how into space these people were and I haven't met some space nerds for a while so just hearing from people that live and breathe this stuff will be cool. Yeah we've got hundreds and hundreds of questions we want to ask yeah. them and I'm also really keen to check out their facility yeah. and see where you actually make stuff and yeah. cameras that goes into space. Yeah I've got this image in my mind of like some like white lab people in lab coats like all these robotics I, I genuinely just don't know if it's going to look like that or something totally different. Oh, cool. There you go. We're waiting for you. How's it going? Good to see you. Thanks for opening the door. Yeah, of course. It seems like a monumental office. Yes. Good to see you. Good to see you. How are you going? Good to see you. How are you going? There we go. Good to see you. Wow. This is so much cooler than a normal office. Oh, thanks. Yeah. No, this is our lab. and. We're in Botany right now in Sydney in Australia, and this is our lab. This is where we build uh, cameras that go on spacecraft. Uh, we've got several in space already, which is awesome. Some more going up at the end of the year. We either rent other people's cameras in space or we build our own and then give them to people. And, and that's what this lab's for. This is where the magic happens. Yeah. So this is our lab. We've had it for a good couple of years now and we've built cameras here that have gone into orbit. And we've got a whole bunch more that are ready to be shipped out. At HERO, we're on a mission to make space transparent, and we want to be able to image anything in the solar system on demand. Today, we currently help satellite operators to image and identify issues on their satellites, and the way that we do that is by taking photos of them from other satellites as they pass close by. So HERO actually started as an asteroid mining company. We started in 2016. Sadly, we found out that wasn't a huge business. So two years in, we, we pivoted to look at other satellites instead. And it turns out there's heaps of problems with satellites that we can help solve. And it's a massive market today. And and the other interesting thing was, uh, even though we started as an asteroid uh, mining company, uh, the technology we were developing was directly transferable to imaging satellites. So, yeah, didn't need to change a thing. Yeah, so both application, cameras in space, looking at something in space. So what's really unique about HEO is that they're both a hardware company and a software company. This gives them a great moat as a company and actually makes them very attractive to investors. Primarily a, a subscription to our software and the analytics and data that we pull from that. Um, but the way that we do that is by having using sensors in space. And we don't, there aren't really enough sensors in space today. So what we do is we build our own sensors as well and provide them to other companies. So we either sell them or we own and operate them, but the whole idea is to get more data in the places that matter. Well, we sell images and analytics to our customers, and uh, we've got a range of commercial and government customers, including the Australian Space Agency, the UK Space Agency, a whole bunch of national security agencies around the world in the US, Japan, Australia, and the UK, and, and a lot more. So now I'm gonna to speak to another Adam, who's one of the hardware employees, <laughs> about what he's building. Good to see you. Yeah, you too. I've heard that this is the optics alignment sort of thing. Yes. We use this setup to uh, do alignment of our optical systems to get the performance of the optics correct. We use lasers. We have mirrors in there. But at the end of the day, we're just trying to tweak the performance of our optics. Yeah. What are you actually doing in this vat? Yeah, so this is uh, a funnels unit that we're just forced to assembly. So we glued this last night and it's all ready to go. Um, we do most of our optics assembly inside a clean environment. So we don't have a clean room at this facility, but we use this laminar flow cabinet in order to create a clean environment. So what we have here, we have a couple of different um, cameras. So the smaller camera here is our camera called Homes. This is the first one that we launched. We launched this in the space in June, 2023. Um, so these two, uh, this is an example of what the sort of the telescope looks like inside the structure. Um, Shall I drive out of it? Yeah, awesome. So we obviously bag them to keep them as clean as possible. You don't want dust on your optics. Um, so these have been assembled in the clean. You can see here an example of like the structure. So this, this is the structure where, you know, the tube sits inside it. Um, and these are the bolt, these are the sort of holes that mount to the spacecrafts. This guy here, we should probably move on to the bigger one, is our bigger telescope. So um, 
The first one of these will launch in Feb next year. Uh, we're really excited about this one. So something that we've been helping space agencies do is to track uh, debris or, or satellites that have stopped operating. Usually they've ended their designed life, so they, they fulfilled their mission. But the safest way to uh, deal with satellites after they finish their mission is to deorbit them, um, preferably over a part of the Earth that's uninhabited. Now, just due to the sheer volume of satellites, over the last several years, we've had several incidents occurring. So, for example, earlier this year, a house in Florida was partially destroyed by a battery falling from the International Space Station. Two years ago, we had a, a farmer woke up to a large piece of uh, SpaceX debris had fallen into his land and jackknifed into the ground just a few hundred meters from his front door. So what Elon Musk is doing in space is really fantastic, um, but sometimes uh, debris from, from those satellites is, is hitting the ground. As you mentioned, Hio aren't just a hardware company. There's a big software component to what they do. All the footage that's taken on the cameras and sensors is analyzed by complex software, and we're about to go check that out. So we've just arrived at Hio's office in Stone and Chalk in Sydney. Yeah, we're excited to talk to some of the employees, understand the software side of the product better, and just see what the vibes of the office are like. Let's go and check it out. What we focus mostly on is delivering to the product to the customer. Hunting uh, through data sets, finding the satellites that we're aiming to look for, uh, utilizing AI a lot of the time to do that as well. And once we've found the satellite, enhancing that, that image, uh, delivering it to, to customers, providing our own intuition and, and um, insights as well. Mm -hmm, cool. So that last point about where you find those images and you deliver them to customers, you mentioned before you've got this image capture system. Can yeah. you run me through that? The satellite takes images in bands and we take images over uh, about two to three second time period with a certain exposure, a certain, um, a certain frame rate, and we hope to capture the image, the satellite in image as it sort of passes by our imaging satellite. And here you can see we can flick through a bunch of images and we see the background tend to move and we can capture a satellite as it moves wow. through. And if you zoom in, we can generally see, you know, it can be a bit small, but the images are really high res. So. Yeah. So what R&D has been looking at for the last few months is how we can increase our image quality. So NEI is a pretty new thing that we do um, and there's been a lot of work going into us understanding exactly how we can really optimise around that. So we look at two different things. Number one, we look at how we can optimise the use of the cameras that we have access to to take better images. So understanding things like the imaging distance, how velocity affects the image quality, how the lighting conditions affect the image quality and understanding that better and then also being able to predict that better as well. Cool. And then we also, once we've taken the image, we look at how we can apply some kind of processing to that to make that better so that we can then pass that on to customers, um, to governments, and allow them to make better decisions. Something that is really important to us is our, our mission statement, so to make space transparent. So it's kind of a joke, space is transparent, but things are really hard, far away, it's really hard to see. And sometimes um, things in space are over parts of the earth um, where you know no one's on the ground to observe what's happening up there. So I think the lack of transparency in space is used by a lot of malicious actors to kind of freak people out um, and make them think that uh, things are happening that aren't and that it creates conflict here on Earth. Um, I think that's a really bad outcome. On that as well, there, there's huge commercial implications as well. So with so many satellites launching, um, it's great for us on Earth because every satellite in space that does something means that we reduce the burden on to have that infrastructure on Earth. And we save a lot of infrastructure costs, so it's, it's amazing. We can you know, have internet in, in places with no internet connectivity, but we've got to maintain um, that resource, that spatial resource. So, um, that's really critical as well, just to understand if a satellite isn't working as intended, how do we get it back into action or how do we tell someone that they need to go over and, and collect that and remove it and, and clean it up. So I think really important for those reasons. So when thinking about the future of HEO, is the space arena just going to inevitably keep on thriving? They've got this funding and they've got these huge tailwinds that are supporting them. Well, not quite. 
Because of the sensitive nature of this industry and how intertwined this industry is with selling to the government, regulation changes can have a big impact. Take, for example, the US monopoly laws. This law was in place stating that US companies literally couldn't enter the market that HEO was in. Those laws are now being repealed, so this opens HEO up to a whole realm of competition. What HEO has, has done is, is demonstrate, which is enormously, again, enormously powerful and valuable, it has done with technology, uh, with imagination, with business cycles and with practices that kind of reflect a, a Silicon Valley mindset, so high risk, um, really putting things together in highly creative and imaginative ways. The number of technologies crowded onto what HEO does or into what HEO does is extraordinary. When we started doing, uh, we now know it's called non-Earth imaging, um, we were surprised that no one else in the world was doing it. We thought we were just incredibly smart people and that's why we were doing it and no one else was. Just turns out the US was very good at keeping secrets. Um, and they'd been in fact doing this for 60 years. And they also had regulations that prevented other uh, US companies from doing this. So that said, uh, what we were doing here in Australia actually triggered that law to change. It was about 18 months ago that trigger happened and allowed other companies to come into the space. But because we were uh, first mover, it really allowed us to be out there in front. Um, and what we're seeing is that competitors are only now starting to get some kind of product out there in the world. So that's been a huge advantage for us. The other thing that we do though, that I think is important is we, we now see that as an opportunity. So now we can actually partner with US companies that were prohibited from doing this before. And because our model is to rent time on other satellites and to monetize them during their downtime, it means that we can onboard all those great sensors in the US that we just couldn't even touch before. So we see that this is more of an opportunity rather than a challenge. Um, and honestly, it's a really exciting time um, to be in the industry. So we think space would become a more uh, transparent place uh, in the next five years, and he will play a huge role in that. Uh, whenever you introduce a new technology in a terrestrial domain, let's and we are now uh, talking about with our very talented team on how he will plays that role. Uh, five years down the road, like what would the end state for um, non-earth imaging would look like and what sort of a role would he play in that. And all of our technological developments, business decisions are made uh, looking at that endpoint, which is a very exciting. And we were lucky to be invited to Hero's new product launch event, which we're going to now. So we've learned so much about space on this adventure. The space race, what's going on up there, and how this small but mighty Australian company called HEO has a massive role to play. All in all, it's making me more and more curious about how much of a big role space will have in all of our lives. Now, HEO are just one of many companies that are playing an increasing role in this expanding industry in Australia. These companies often don't get highlighted enough, but we think they should. They're sensational stories and they're doing impactful things for the world. This was the Sachin and Adam show and we're the storytellers of Australian tech. If you want to see more of these, hit the subscribe button.